further back to the year 2021. Between September 2021 to March 2022, that a comparable period, our debt rose by 405 billion from 7.96 trillion to 8.401 trillion. External debt was at 4.209 trillion, while domestic debt stood at 4.192 trillion. This was the time Kenya was struggling with the impacts of COVID-19, including implementation of subsidies and the emerging war in Ukraine. But our total debt was still lower than what Ruto has incurred in six months' time. Kenya Kwanza has borrowed more than any other regime. They have removed subsidies, raised taxes, but the cash crunch has continued. They cannot pay salaries. They cannot disburse money to schools. They cannot disburse money to counties. They cannot disburse money to the elderly. They cannot finance the National Hospital Insurance Fund. And nearly all major infrastructure projects have stalled. Where is the money going? It is being stolen and being spent on wrong priorities to massage Ruto's ego. And that is not all. Quietly, Ruto is trying to change the country's debt ceiling from the current absolute number of trillion shilling, 10 trillion to a moving number of 55% of GDP. And right now they are trying to bring an amendment in Parliament that will remove the parliamentary authority to sanction increase of debt. The debt level is already 60% of the GDP. To beat that violation of the law, we don't want to force an amendment to the Public Finance Act to allow the National Treasury and not Parliament to set new debt ceiling. Which is why we are calling on Kenyans to reject excess taxation to finance wasteful expenditure. It is urgent that we bring Ruto back to Earth because he lives on another planet. As this bill heads to the National Assembly, we must remind Ruto that excessive taxation is stifling growth. We must tell Ruto that when people have to park cars at home because of cost of fuel, it is bad for the economy. We must tell him that when Kenyans postpone traveling up country